From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a Tuesday. It's good to have you. We're going to open up the phone lines in a little bit. You can join in the conversation or on this day, you can just sit back and listen and learn. I think this is a show that might be a benefit to a lot of our viewers here on the morning show. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a wonderful organization group here that does some great stuff, a fundraiser that's coming up. Um, so get your running shoes ready. We'll talk about that as well. And, uh, and as I said, as always, we can take some uh, questions from you if you want to join in the conversation. But first, you might want to just listen and figure out what we're discussing this morning. But about 50 forward about their event, Viva La Diva, coming up. Is that that right? You said it fabulous. We have uh, our guests with us this morning to talk about it from 50 Forward. Uh, I guess, uh, wait, wait, Susan, are you the communications director? Yes, I am. That's why she's on the show, to communicate with all of us. Susan Sizemore with us, nice to have you on. Also, Anne Claire Hoffman, um, your Viva La Viva, Viva, Viva La Diva race director. That is correct. Well, good, all right, listen, before we get into why this fundraising effort is so important, let's talk more about maybe some folks who aren't aware, and, and you know, it's been around for decades, your organization. Talk about what, what you do. Sure, we're a 60 year old nonprofit and we have seven active um, aging centers, lifelong learning centers in Middle Tennessee. Okay. And we also have many supportive care programs, and that's one of the things we're talking about today is Viva La Diva. The proceeds from Viva will uh, benefit the supportive care uh, programs. So those programs include things like Meals on Wheels, we have an adult day services program. So with so many adults turning 65, 10,000 people in the United States turn 65 daily. Uh, yeah. So there's so many people needing supportive care and just services in general. And I think it's an unprecedented uh, amount of people turning that age now. So we have many opportunities at 50 Forward. We really give people um, a sense of community, purpose, engagement. Mm -hmm. And so throughout the agency, we have lots of opportunities for people to kind of define their next chapter. Yeah, I mean, what sounds neat about it, and I think about my folks who are much older than this, but I mean, these types of services seem to target the seniors, and many of them are the ones who I think are at home watching this show right now, that are not um, in nursing homes or anything like this. It's the ones that are still at home or in a, a community living where they're fairly still independent but right. need a little help, right? Exactly. And in a lot of ways at our centers, we have people who have recently retired mm -hmm. or people who just really need to find their next goal in life, define right. their new opportunity. And so that's one of the things 54 has been really strong about. And in addition, you know, you talking about your older folks, um, in my world, my father, um, even though I grew up in Michigan, mm -hmm. he was there, he had a, a traumatic brain injury, needed mm -hmm. assistance, and 50 Forward gave me so much guidance. And even though he was a long way away, they really helped me navigate a world that I wasn't familiar with at all. Yeah, I'm curious, are there so, similar organizations like this in other states? I mean, I assume there are, but 50 Forward's here, is that right? As far as you know, I mean, it's here. Absolutely, 50 Forward is okay. based here in Middle Tennessee. All right. Um, there are other senior organizations throughout yeah. the United States, but 50 Forward really is a, a unique brand in that we not only provide the support and care and the guidance through social workers and through um, I, our experience, I guess, in the. Um, world of serving seniors, but we also have so many opportunities um, to keep people really volunteering and out in the community more That's than they ever so would be. Important. But yeah, figuring out what you're going to do maybe after you've retired. Mm. Um, and you know, everyone thinks, oh, retirement. Cool. I'm not looking forward to retirement. I don't want, you know, I want to be busy doing stuff. If I'm not here, I want to keep busy. So many people retire and then they think, what next? What do they do? And then you sit around languishing at home and then your brain rots. Okay, so you got to get out and do stuff, right? So how do people get in touch with you? Well, they can go on the internet to 54.org mm -hmm. and look on our website and find out about all the things we have to offer. We also like, have a phone kind of number. Stuff? Okay, is there, are there dating, dating things? You know, we really don't have it. Okay, Maybe but kind of like a singles dating. gathering among widows? <laughs> and no widowers, no? You know, we really do have a lot of romances that have See, taken I knew it. I knew it. That's true. Okay. That's true. Um, we used to have a lot of dances, and we still uh -huh. do events and some dance, but there used to be a Friday night dance, and there are some legendary relationships I, that grew from 
and that's oh, great. Um, or just friendships. Yeah. It, well, absolutely. And in a lot of ways, I think when people really get re-engaged and, and learn that they have something that is of value, I mean, we have volunteer programs for um, young children, we have Friends Learning in Pairs, and a foster grandparent program, where really you can use your expertise maybe as, as a media person, mm -hmm. or if you're an accountant, and really help these younger kids in school, mentor them, and help give them the opportunities for the okay. future too. So it's kind of like giving back and finding oh, value. Okay, and so some of the stuff is going to be um, where they get in touch and things that will help them, but maybe you put them in a position to help other people. Where, where do the costs come into play? I mean, and we'll talk about the fundraiser here in a moment. What, what is the money spent on how, and, uh, and what does it cost seniors that get involved? So to be a member of 50 Ford, it's $10 a month. We also have nothing. scholarships, yes. Yeah. And for some individuals, even $10 is significant. Yeah, if you're and on so, a fixed income, sure. Sure, and so we're always looking for, um, we're funded through grants, through private donations. Mm -hmm. We have sponsors for events like Viva, and really without that community support, we wouldn't be able to do everything that we do. But getting back to the membership, you know, if, if you commit to being a member for $10 a month, okay. you can come to any of the programs and, and uh, uh, events at the centers and then sometimes there is um, additional program fees if there are supplies needed. Sure. Um, ceramics? So there are programs like ceramics, uh, absolutely. Know, so you have to pay for the clay. You have to. But still, you get the instruction. <laughs> I love ceramics. All right, but anyway, go <laughs> what on. What a nice sound bite. Yeah. Pay, for the clay. <laughs> pay for the clay. Pay for the clay. Oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. one of our centers in Donaldson is really known for the arts. And right. it's, there's a dinner theater there that a lot of people don't know about. There's also um, the Middle Tennessee Gem and Mineral Society have a, uh, th there's an affiliation with them in Middle Tennessee. And so they have lapidary, uh, silversmithing, uh, metalsmithing, and some of the most amazing jewelry comes out of that center in Donaldson. So, so. But you can go there and learn some of these things. You can things go there and learn. You can also go there and shop in the lobby. They've got a little display case if you want to purchase earrings or uh, there's all sorts of things that they've created in the in the classes but a lot of people don't even really realize that's going on and it's because of that affiliation so each of our seven centers mirrors the community that it represents. And the seven centers again you said are in Middle Tennessee is it just Davidson County or is it expanding? We, ha we have five in Davidson okay. and two in Williamson. And two in Williamson mm -hmm. okay I bet you'd like to have more. We would like to have more, and there are some conversations about some additional um, opportunities in Middle Tennessee. Yeah, in Wilson County and some yeah. of these. Um, and all told, then right now, I, I guess I was looking at some of the numbers, there are 20,000 senior adults, children and families. Been, is there, uh, among the uh, seniors, what, what is the average? I'm guessing 50 forward when it started 60 years ago, you thought 50 years forward. Now 60 is the new 50, right? I mean, so what's the average age for people that are involved? I would say probably our most active group is between probably 65 and 75. Okay, yeah. okay, 65 and 70. But you can join when you're 50? You can join when you're 50, and a lot of things, you know, we haven't touched on travel. We have a travel group yeah. that not only does day trips, you know, they might go to Suwannee or they might take, you know, a train trip somewhere in Middle Tennessee, but they also do overseas travel. So we have a travel group that they're going to do a New Year's Eve in um, the Cal along, I think it's tied to. Um, a New Year's event in California, mm -hmm. anyway. But we also have gone to Cuba. All right, so, so really, yeah, oh, wow, yeah. already, yeah. All right. So, well, before we get into more of the details and the sure. services, by the way, we can. Have, if you have questions about things they may offer, the like, join in. But I, I just don't want to let Anna sitting there. I need to let her weigh <laughs> in as well. And we'll talk more, uh, you know, before the end of the program to promote this. But talk a little bit again about the fundraising, how important Viva La Diva is. Sure. So this Saturday, November fifth, is the Viva La Diva five K and ten K, yeah. and it's in Franklin on Nissan North America's campus. Okay. And we're very lucky to have them as a premier sponsor. But I think it's a really cool event because not only do the proceeds benefit 50 Ford and the supportive care services, but it's also kind of an awareness piece for the community. Unless you're aging yourself or if you have parents that are going through the aging process, then you don't really think about aging, mm -hmm. especially at a young age. Right. So this is an opportunity to not only make people aware about 50 Ford and what we offer, but also to really show that the more active you are at a younger age, the better chances of longevity and better health you're going to have later on. Yeah, so uh, I mean, that's absolutely, and that's why a run is a good idea. I think yes, that's awesome. Absolutely. Now, I just uh, to hit on a couple points on that. 
If you want to sign up, um, and how much is it um, to uh, to do the race? It is forty five dollars to do okay. the five k or the ten k, right. and that includes a tech shirt, a finisher charm, uh, eligible for all of the age and team awards. Right, and, and they also want people wearing costumes. Yes, is a best dressed uh, diva and a dude costume. Yes, so we started that I believe three years ago. How many years have you been doing the run? Uh, this is our sixth annual. Okay, okay. So okay. we're in the swing of things now. But we started the costume contest about three years ago to kind of add on a fun element. The race always falls in November, so it's a little bit after Halloween. People maybe haven't put up their costumes yet. Right. So uh, it's great. We have uh, guys and girls dressed up head to toe, decked out in these costumes. So the energy on race day is great, seeing all these people dressed up. Yeah. And we always have people from the fashion community that come out to judge and uh, people that come and MC as well. And Susan, if you want to touch on who those people are this year. Sure. We've got um, from the fashion community, we have Eric Adler, he is a, a men's tailor, um, men's clothing for the tastemaker. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. Eric, but he is not only a dapper dresser, but you can, I think <laughs> he's got a shop now in Green Hills, but okay. you can really have some fabulous menswear made by Eric. Right. We have Alicia Searcy, she's new with us this year, and she calls herself the Spashionista. Uh -huh. She is... Um, at 51, she launched her own company and uh, really wants to build awareness for those people in, um, with disabilities. She's in a wheelchair, has cere uh, cerebral palsy. And uh, for us, when she first contacted us and said she was interested in being involved, she said, I really have realized at 51 how many opportunities there are really to design for people who have limited um, capability to dress themselves mm -hmm. and and so she's really taking fashion to a new a new level I guess in in that respect so she's new to the contest this year and then we also have Melissa Watkins and she is a fashion blogger and her uh, blog is Fab Glance. That's awesome. And so, so it's going to be great. They'll all be out there. Uh, listen before we take our first mm. break I want to squeeze in Ronald so he doesn't have to wait through the break. Ronald good morning. Good morning Claire. How are you? Good. What's on your mind Ron? Uh, I'm that problem I'm hoping can be uh, resolved or... All right, maybe we can help you. What's your problem? I have uh, tried to make contact with Fifty Portland several times, mm -hmm. and I'm having a great deal of difficulty. I've not got any response yet. I've called several mm -hmm. times, uh, and just not able to make contact. What, what is it you need? Because now they're on here now, so go ahead and shoot. You're with the communications director. Well, I mean, I need to get, you know, to figure out how to get to talk to them. I'm 50 plus. Yeah. Uh, my psychologist recommended them to have something to do to get out of each day. And I'm just not able to make contact with them. And so you're just looking. So you want to just get involved with 50 Forward and find out about some things you can do with them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is who you cater to. And how old did you say you were? Uh, 50 plus. And, and you're retired? Yeah. Uh, disabled. Disabled? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Able to retire. Okay. Well, I mean, we can uh, talk a little bit about some stuff. Do you have any questions for him? And then, you know, stick around. I, I assume we have a number we can give him maybe as well that where you can get through to someone. Sure. The best number to call is 615-743-3400. And depending on where your level of interest is, we'd be happy to talk to you about either center membership, depending on which center is closest to you, or if you need um, further assistance, you know, with you know any supportive care issues, we're happy to help you there as well. Um, okay, and listen, what I, uh, you may not have had your pen and paper there. I'll give you that number out. Just stay with the show here for a moment, and I'll give that out again before the end of the program. I, we have to take a break. When we come back, that's one thing. I'm glad he called just from the sense. We talked about a lot of the cool um, kind of recreational things and way, efforts to help. What about the folks that maybe, you know, um, suffer from a disability or, or actually need some help as they continue to live as independently as they can? What kind of services 50 Forward provides? And we'll get into that. As soon as we come back after this break, and stick around, Ronald, I'll give that number out again so you can write it down, and I assume if you call that, uh, you'll be able to get the information you need. We'll be back with more right after this.